Data sharing. Big data. The learning outcomes include explain why we should share data, examine whether we should share data, and list obstacles to sharing data. Let's talk about sharing data. And that's when you're, you're, you're sharing the results that you have or what you find, your findings, with someone outside of your research group, with your teachers, with other students, at a conference, published in a journal, board of directors, or president of a company, or, or your manager, whoever it might be. This does help extend the body of knowledge, the network of associations that are surrounding variables, and helps people understand the phenomenon under study in a bet better. It, you've got more information. You, of course, need to communicate clearly and concisely in a manner that's suitable for the audience that you'll be sharing the results with. You can watch this short YouTube video that talks about why you should report adverse drug reactions so others don't make the same mistakes, so you can build upon what you've already learned and not have to reinvent the wheel. But some will argue that you should not share because it's your research data that you have sweated over and spent time and effort and resources to find, so you should not share it. Do we have to share data or should we share data? And, and these are not questions that are easy to answer. If you do share data, then you get more and more data. You get big data. You understand your customers better. They understand you better. By sharing, we all gain more knowledge. David Newman, who's uh, one of the research vice presidents at Gartner, one of the leading IT research companies, management consultants, proposes a concept called open data. He says, for clients seeking competitive advantage through direct interactions with customers, partners, and suppliers, open data is the solution. For example, more government agencies are now opening their data to the public web to improve transparency, and more commercial organizations are using open data to get closer to customers, share costs with partners, and generate revenue by monetizing information assets. So his contention is everyone benefits through open sharing of data with partners, with suppliers, with competitors, with customers, with regulatory agencies, and with the government. Everybody benefits. More data is out there. It's his contention. Open data. So why should we share? It builds the research prestige of your group of researchers collaborating on the project. It builds the research prestige of your organization. It may allow you to get future grants, may allow you collaboration opportunities. It does, of course, allow others to build upon your work and to not have to start over at the beginning. They're able to start with what you've already learned and extend the body of knowledge, which over time will benefit all of society. If you receive funding from government agencies, most of them now have mandates that you must share your results in some form at some time period, so it does help you meet those mandates and allows you to qualify for future funding opportunities. It provides access to less developed countries who may not be able to afford the subscription services that are required to access current research studies in top journals. There, therefore, you can bridge the divide, much like the digital divide, the, the access divide, that will allow them to have access to the same research as their more developed colleagues, their colleagues in more developed countries. 
and it may be in the best interest of the public good to learn about an adverse drug reaction, to share that there was a data breach and some data may be compromised, your credit card data may be compromised. You don't want your customers to find out when they learn they've had their identity stolen. However, there are reasons you should not share. If you can compromise the individual's privacy, for instance, if you have only a small number of people in one group, um, I, I did a project at one time where we only had one Asian female that responded and we were unable to report those results because someone who happened to know she was in the class or was part of the study would have been able to individually identify her. Sometimes you have a contract that does not allow you to share data without permission of whoever the contracting agency is or your, the organization with whom you have a contract. So sometimes they don't want it to be shared as proprietary data that allows them to get a competitive advantage and they don't want to share it with others. If there are concerns about the security of the data, if you're unable to protect the security of the data, then you should not share it until you resolve any security concerns. If you plan to file for a patent, there are many restrictions on what you can and cannot do. One of the restrictions is that you must not share the information with others if you plan to file a patent because it's, it's your secret idea, your intellectual property. Finally, if the data has been collected in an unethical manner, then you don't want to share it. Perhaps people were coerced or did not have the opportunity to give informed consent, like the Nazi medical experiments during World War II or the experiments on the Tuskegee Airmen, the syphilis study. So there are times when you don't want to share because the information you have was gained in an unethical manner, even if it wasn't you who behaved unethically. There are also obstacles to sharing data with electronic health records, which there's a lot of discussion about electronic health records, privacy, having the right medications with, without any that you're allergic to, understanding your current health conditions and, and what might be going on, but making it secure. The founder and CEO of Epic, Judy Faulkner, had some comments, some reasons why there were data sharing obstacles with, with health records in particular. And Judy Faulkner's been called the most powerful woman in health care. She's a self-made billionaire with an estimated net worth of $2.6 billion. She started as a computer programmer and truly worked her way up to where she is now. Some of the obstacles that she sees Patients want to control their own data. They don't want it be, to be shared across hospitals and networks and doctor's offices unless they've explicitly agreed. Medical personnel have to be trained on how to use the system. That takes resources, time, and money. You have to make sure that the data is secured. With HIPAA laws in place, even one Accidental data breach can cost a lot of money, and if you have a, a batch of data that's compromised, it could be significant money that your organization would have to pay. Finally, you have to link many different doctor's offices, hospitals, urgent care clinics, your minute clinics at CVS and Target, and all of those have to be linked in a seamless manner to work quickly, efficiently, effectively, and without error. And that's a very, that's a Herculean undertaking. Judy Faulkner also commented at a conference where she brought together all of the people that use the Epic product and 
she said each of you alone has big data but if we put our data together then it's huge data now that offers many opportunities as well as challenges security concerns but if we're able to gather all that data we may be able to advance health care we can reduce the deaths by incorrect medication every year. We can perhaps reduce the hospital readmission rates, which are around 75% and cost a significant portion of our health care. So we have many opportunities with this even bigger data, which she calls huge data. To summarize, as we share data, we do contribute to better understanding of issues and situations across the world. However, you may not want to give up your proprietary data that you have spent time and effort to, to gather. You may not want to give up intellectual property rights or to allow others to understand your intellectual property rights. You do not want to expose customers to identity theft or to medical mistakes and you don't want to lose any competitive advantage you may have over others. So people are hesitant to share data. We don't have all the infrastructure training and resources that we need in place and you've got to secure the data and ensure that it will be used in a proper manner. If we're able to overcome these obstacles then we have the potential, as, as the Gartner VP mentioned, the potential for open data, or as the EPIC CEO mentioned, we have the potential for huge data, which presents many opportunities for us to learn about our customers, our employers, our government agencies, and so forth. It also presents challenges in terms of security, and intellectual property rights. But we can move towards open data and huge data.